Howdy, I'm Baron Stone from San Antonio, Texas. I want to show you how I like to conceptualize lists containing other lists. Now your basic single dimensional list is pretty easy to understand because it's just a series of items. But when we start embedding lists inside of other lists to create two or even three dimensional lists, it can be hard to visualize that in your mind. Now there's a simple analogy that I like to use, and that's to compare two dimensional lists to a parking lot. You can think of your basic list like a row of parked cars, where we can index every car in that row by number, starting at zero, then one, two, three, and so on. Now, if we take that row or list of cars and put it inside of another list, we've effectively created a list of lists or a two-dimensional list of those cars, and you can think of that like a parking lot. So to find my car in a parking lot, I need two pieces of information. First, I need to know which row in that parking lot I parked on, and then second, I need the index of the spot along that row that I parked my car. And this analogy can be carried on into a three-dimensional list of list of lists. You could think of that as a multi-story parking structure. So there I need three pieces of information to find my car. I need to know which floor I parked on, I need to know which row on that floor I parked, and then finally I need the index of the spot on that row on the floor where I parked my car. So let's look at some example code that demonstrates that. In this simple example code, I've defined three different lists. I have a one-dimensional list here, which as we said represents a row of parked cars, which we index by a single number for their parking spot. I've got a two-dimensional list down here, which represents a large parking lot, and so you need two numbers to index cars in there. You need to know which row they're on, so I have row 0, row 1, and row 2, and then you also need a number of which parking spot in that row they're on. And then I finally have a three-dimensional list down here, which as we said is like a multi-story parking garage. And so you need three numbers to index cars there. You need to know which floor they're on. So I have all these cars are on the zeroth floor, all these cars are on the first floor, and all these cars are on the second floor. Within those floors you need to know which row they're on, and then again within that row which parking spot. Uh, and you'll notice on the 3D parking garage I was running out of creativity on uh, cars to put in there. So I just copied that two-dimensional parking garage three times and uh, I added a little floor zero, floor one, or floor two to the end of each name to differentiate those. So let's look at how we index. Uh, we'll start with just that one-dimensional list, so a row of parked cars. So down here, if we just print off that one-dimensional list, uh, as we've learned in videos before, it'll simply return or give you back that full list uh, formatted in brackets uh, as a list. And then if we take that list and we add little brackets to the end and index uh, out an item from that list, where this is going to print is actually the item at the first index. So if we look at that one dimensional list, we see that the Nissan is at index one. So if we one print, as expected, uh, we get back a Nissan. So that's fairly straightforward. We've, we've worked with one dimensional lists. Uh, we should be comfortable with that. But let's move on to a two-dimensional list. So down here, if I print out just the two-dimensional list, as we would expect, we get a list of lists here uh, in the standard Python list format. If I give it a single indexing value, this first indexing value that I'm doing is telling it which row within that two-dimensional parking lot I want to get a value back for. And you'll see if I run that, it gives me back, in this case, just a one-dimensional list containing all of the cars in that row. So here, when I'd say parking 2D index 1, I'm going up to this two-dimensional parking lot, looking in the first row, and it's returning back that entire first row of cars. And now to index a single car out of that row, I need to apply another index onto that row. So I'll say here, I'm going to take in the 2D parking lot, give me the car from the first cars from the first row and then give me the second car out of that row. So if we go up here we can see that the first row has the Ford, the Chevy, and the Tesla and car index number two is going to be our Tesla, a very cool car. So if we run that, shaboom, there's our Tesla. And so let's move on up and continue this analogy into a third dimension and so that's our uh, three-dimensional, our multi-story parking lot and so, of course, if we print the parking lot, you can see we get a very long Python list of lists of lists, Oops. all the way out to there. 
Uh, you see when I actually was building a list you can put them on separate lines to make it much easier to read. Uh, if I index just the first, uh, give one index there, that's going to give me back a list um, of list of lists of all the cars on that floor. So here I've indexed floor number two, and you can see all the cars that it returns back here have that F2 tag representing that they're on floor number two. So if I want to index all the cars on floor two, I can now add another index here for one. So this is going to return to me a list of the cars that are on floor two and in the first row. So we can see here we get Ford F2, Chevy F2, and Tesla F2, as we'd expect up here on the second row uh, of the second floor. I guess I should say index one of the second floor. We got Ford F2, Chevy F2, and Tesla F2. And then finally here, to index out a single car, since we're doing with a 3D list, I need to provide it three different indices. I give it its floor, so floor two, row one, car in spot zero. And so this will return not a list, but actually a single individual car. So now let's see if, say we wanted to go through that parking garage and perform an operation on every individual car item in that garage. Well, in the lessons this week, we learned about how to use for loops to iterate through lists. Uh, so let's try using a for loop to iterate through that three-dimensional parking garage. So I'll type for car in parking 3D. And I just like using the print statement for uh, these simple examples. So let's do that. Let's see. Will this run through my three-dimensional list in the parking garage and print out individual items like this for every car in that garage? No, it doesn't. What it's done is it's iterated through the top dimension uh, of that list. So it's basically returned to me three different lists, one for each of the floors in that garage. But now, rather than getting back individual cars, I've just gotten back three two-dimensional lists of floors. So how will I go through and access each of these individual cars uh, throughout this entire parking structure? Well, this is where we can use for loops nested inside of other for loops. And this is something you'll commonly do when dealing with multi-dimensional lists. So let's go back here and change this. We know that if I'm calling a for loop on this three-dimensional parking garage, it's not returning individual cars, it's actually returning back floors to me. And I'm going to create another for loop inside of here. I'm going to say for the row in every floor that I get. And then finally, another for loop inside there for car in row. And now I can print car. And so what this is doing is it's taking that three-dimensional parking garage, it's breaking it down and giving me back three two-dimensional lists, each one representing a floor. We're then going to operate on each of those floors and break those down into their component rows and then operate on each of those rows and break down into their component cars and then print those cars. And so if we run that code, now you can see here we've gone through and used the print operator on every single car in that three-dimensional garage. In that example, I showed you one, two, and three-dimensional lists, but you don't have to stop there. You can keep embedding lists inside of lists inside of lists inside of lists, on and on and on. It's going to get four, five, six dimensional lists, however many you want. But I think when you start getting into lists that big, you start creating some space-time traveling parking garages. And that's more than I can comprehend, so I just stopped at three dimensions. I hope this video has helped you to visualize and understand lists and will make your programming life a little bit easier. Happy programming.